up shooters Rob here with RS Solutions today we're going to be going over barrel break-in so with barrel break-in I know there's a lot of opinions different perspectives on what it takes to actually break a barrel in I've heard everything from you know just shooting a certain number of rounds through a specific barrel will successfully break it in I've heard shoot around clean the barrel shoot five rounds clean the barrel you know whatever concoction um, I, I've heard quite a few different perspectives on that so today I have a newly built rifle and it has four test fire rounds through it um, so I'm gonna be monitoring group size and the uh, muzzle velocity with using a magneto speed chronograph I understand there's there's gonna be opinions on using the magneto speed you know with having that barrel your barrel being touched by a, a, an object could possibly impact the harmonics of the barrel. So <clears throat> as I run through this, I'm gonna do five shots. I've got my zero target down range. This scope is not zero, so I'm gonna be working the zero process at the same time. So five rounds with the chrono on the weapon. So I'll get essentially shot five through nine. I'll have muzzle velocities for those five shots. I'll take the chronograph off. We'll shoot another five as we're continuing to monitor groups. And then I have nothing obstructing my barrel. We'll see if there's any changes in grouping. I'll put the chronograph back on and continue that process. I don't have a set amount of rounds that I'm gonna do. I just wanna see where we find consistency. Am I gonna be seeing muzzle velocities change dramatically? Am I not? Am I gonna see groups start at an open, you know, at open groups? Or am I, am I gonna start right away with, with rounds on top of each other? All right, shooters, so one thing that you need to do whenever you get a new scope on your gun to help confirm that you're gonna be on the target that you're aiming at is called a, a bore sight. So the way that you're gonna bore sight is <clears throat> make sure that your cheek piece is clear of your bolt. You're gonna pull your bolt out, and this is gonna allow you to look down your chamber through the barrel, and essentially you wanna try to stabilize the rifle as much as you can, and you're going to you're going to look through your barrel at a target. All right, so I'm looking at my left target. I can see it through my barrel. Now I'm gonna come up to the scope. I can see the scope from here is on center left target. Just confirming, looking back through the barrel, looking back through the scope. Okay, so it looks like I'm on target. We'll see as these first rounds go, if that is the actual case. Alright, so we have bore sighted our weapon. We know the scope is pretty close to where those rounds are going to get sent. Now we've mounted the chronograph, the magneto speed chronograph on the rifle. <clears throat> we've ensured proper fitment, proper spacing, and that's going to allow us to track the muzzle velocity with these rounds as they start going down range. <clears throat> Alright shooters, so we have everything set up now. Chronograph is on. I've got my little LCD screen that feeds me that data. I've got my phone next to me for my notes so I can make sure that I'm tracking everything accurately. And before I get started, and a recommendation to those of you that don't do this already, anytime I'm first, so I'm a cold shooter right now. I have not been shooting today at all. So recommendation just to help alleviate um, you know, some of the variables that come into shooting is before I start sending some live rounds, get a few dry fires in and that'll help kind of break some of that rust off that you had from the previous time shooting. And that'll help not, that'll not only save rounds and not waste rounds, but it'll also help cut back on those small errors that you make whenever you're first getting back into the groove. So I'm gonna do a couple dry fire and then we'll start going hot. All right, I think we're feeling good. Ready to get after it. All 
All right, shooters, so we're gonna take a look at the first group. So point of aim is that top left circle marked with POA. Our first five rounds are to the seven o'clock in that vertical stack. All right, shooters, we're making our way back down range and target. So using the same point of aim for the second iteration. So five shots, same point of aim, and group two is marked up there to the nine o'clock of point of aim. All right, shooters, so at this point we have two five shot series. One with chrono, one with no chrono. Now we're going to go back to chrono with another five shot series. Have the adjustments on the gun and I'm going to make sure not to stay on max mag this time and let's see what those groups look like. Alright, making our way down range for Group three, so looking at the target. Group three, point of aim, center dot. Group three is there right to the 12 o'clock, so those five rounds just on the 12 o'clock side of that dot. Cool. Back that power out, and I'll make that same fucking mistake again. All right, so this is series four, so no chrono. All right, so five rounds, no chrono. <coughs> Send it. making our way down range checking out the target all right so for the fourth series point of aim was at center dot you can see the group off to the four to five o'clock um, groups pretty much remaining the same and I'm feeling comfortable with all these shots they all feel good um, the only thing that I can imagine is maybe getting a little lost in the circle not having a real hard point so for this next iteration, I'm going to be picking a hard point like, like one of these corners, uh, maybe up here. All right, so we're at series five now. Uh, and we're going to transition from those circles to kind of a hard point to give me that smaller target to focus on. Got the chrono hooked up. Ready to blast. And making our way down range, checking out group five. So like I said before, shrink our point of aim. We were just aiming at that intersection right there. And honestly, that was a little bit too small. That, that was too hard for me to truly focus on my reticle, which is crucial whenever you're engaging precision. Um, so point of aim was that intersection and then our five shots were right around there. Um, so first two shots were, you know, the first one was off one o'clock. Second shot was off to the nine o'clock. And then I had three rounds pretty much stack on each other just outside the four o'clock. All right. We're at series or group six. So this will be, this first shot will be the 30th round. Through this rifle, still not seeing any major changes in muzzle velocity and uh, grouping. I think we're starting to see a slight change, but we'll see as the rounds continue. Checking out group six. Looking at target. Got this top right paper. I drew in my own little box for my aiming point. And it in comparison to all of the other groups, it looks like we're possibly reaching a point where, I mean, that's five shots right there. Um, that the groups, 
I don't know how it made that significant jump, but it looks like significant process progress um, with the groupings. Well, we're on series seven now. Uh, so last series grouping looked really great. Got the chrono back on the gun to see if there's any other changes. It's been pre pretty consistent so far through uh, 20 rounds. So um, 30 rounds. Yeah, through 30 rounds. Um, so this, this one will put us at 35 for what we've shot. And remember, we had the four test fires. <clears throat> so chrono's on the gun. Going to track that. And then see if we can continue that trend that we just saw from the Series 6. Let's get after it. All right, coming back down. Checking out Series 7. All right, so point of aim. Obviously just this center orange dot. And then got our five-round group just tucked in 6 o'clock. All right, shooters, that about wraps it up for the break-in process. Um, I accomplished what my goal was, which was to get groups that I know this rifle rifle is capable of shooting. Um, I will add the specifications of this rifle and the ammo that I was using. Um, additionally, there will be information below as far as muzzle velocities for each shot that was tracked. Um, and then any additional things that I think of and can't think of right now. The goal of this video wasn't to, you know, ruffle anybody's feathers about what they believe is the right way to break in a barrel or not. Um, and maybe you don't even believe that the break in is a real thing. Maybe it's just, you know, this is a new gun to me. I was a cold shooter today and maybe I was just getting in my groove. Um, this was purely for informational purposes, like, <clears throat> for people that have new barrels that haven't broke one in before, maybe this is a guide, maybe it's understanding, maybe this gives you some things that you could pay attention to, like the muzzle, velo vo muzzle velocity and the um, just groupings that you have downrange. So yeah, um, for anyone that has done their own break-in process, maybe has a different method, don't hesitate to share it. Um, love to hear your all's feedback. So that about wraps it up. We'll see you on the range.